first met Jack Freck when I joined the High Hill Striped Bass Club back in around 1970. Very impressive looking man, stood six foot plus, ex-Marine captain, served in World War II distinguishedly. Uh, he was quite a fisherman and quite a man. He was a principal at Great Neck Schools, uh, well educated, well spoken, and he was most noted for designing a plugs, making new plugs that always seemed to work. I was a fairly good fisherman, and he loved competition, and he saw me as competition, so we immediately developed uh, in fact, I won, they used to have a month, like seven contests a year, I won four out of the seven. And that kind of set them off. That's, <laughs> and then guys would edge them. They, they knew how to push his buttons. They were talking, watch out for this kid. He's good. <laughs> and he would, oh yeah, he would. One time I caught a big bluefish. He says, I'm going to fish all night to beat that fish. <laughs> that so, was Jack. <laughs> so he was competitive. Very, extremely competitive. Extremely. He would challenge you to who would get the most fish at the end of the year. In fact, one time he challenged me, and I was keeping up with him in the beginning. He took a sabbatical, took a year off from work. <laughs> I'm serious. You don't know the fish he made. He went up in there tucking and slaughtered the fish, and and down in Hatteras and slaughtered big blue fish. I forgot how many points he had, but it was tremendous. What? I couldn't even come close. <laughs> We, is he's credited as being one of the first people to, to wear a wetsuit? That's from what I'm hearing. He, when I met him, he wore a suit. There was a few guys that wore suits. He was one of them. He was, I was told he's one of the original guys. Whether he is, he's probably one of the original guys. Who were in his crew? He really didn't have a clue, he, crew. He was pretty close with... Uh, a couple of guys in the fishing club, Whitey, uh, I'll think of the names as they come to me, but uh, there was about seven, eight guys he fished a lot with. He was, knew everybody, and but he was kind of alone. He would fish alone. Uh, Richie Hazensall fished and tagged along with him a lot, but he was a short little guy, so he couldn't really keep up with Jack. <laughs> he was extremely aggressive. He was, uh, Jack was, he, he stood out in the daytime, he, he would, Wear one of these Australian World War II hats in the daytime, and always no shirt. And he was like, he wasn't a young kid, he was in good shape. <laughs> Built his own house. He was, oh yeah, very impressive. <laughs> if you really knew him, very impressive person. What is um, behind these laws that he just started out of nowhere? What, what's the reason that he stopped making laws? He writes a whole article on why he started. He, he started, Jack was not one to throw money around. He, he built laws to save money and also to perfect laws. Because you, in those days you couldn't get, very hard to get a, a good three ounce starter. You couldn't get them. And, or a heavier popper. You got an atom, you put, you froze them and you put lead in them. And, you know, there really wasn't the laws that you have today. A lot of these, they, were, they weren't meant for Montauk for distance. You know, so he he perfected a lot of them and made some of there's some laws that people haven't seen. He's got freshwater laws that I got home that uh you know you don't see <laughs> divers and beluga. People never heard of the beluga. <laughs> it's a folding metal lip. Tell me about that metal lip. I'm curious. The beluga. Mm -hmm. The beluga. He took two forty nines in one day off of off of near Turtle Cove in Browns. Broke his leg. Took two forty nines. The fish were way off the beach feeding on bunker. And that was about the only plug that worked that reached them. Yeah. Ooh, tell me about the design of that plug. It works. I forgot which manufacturer had one at that time. It works on a pin. And as it's going, out casting out, the, the lip would fold up. The metal lip would fold up. Yeah. And that's that was the purpose. And then once it dug into the water, the lip would fold down. So you basically a metal that can actually cast for a change? Oh, yes, yes. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Um. He was primarily used to fish on the North Shore around Great Neck. He was primarily in the beginning a bluefish, a bluefish fisherman. He knew the sherries so, and he used to pin hook the codfish boats. I, I don't know exactly when, but I would assume right after World War II in the 50s. What was he driving? 
Does he take he a drove, train? He drove a lot of Volkswagen bus in those days. He could, we all, generally, we all had one. He converted it inside, just slept in that. Yeah. Those but that's when those days he had a Volkswagen bus. When I, when I, when he had it earlier, I didn't know him before. Really know him before seventy. What, was Jack competitive only amongst his club members or oh, in general? everybody, anybody, anybody, anybody? He had to be, uh, had to be the, had to be the best. <laughs> Which was that was Jack. You had to realize what he was. Yeah, yeah. He would he would go in those days. We used to he used to sell fish. He would leave the tails of the fish sticking out of the fish box to impress people. <laughs> nah, he was a good guy, don't get me. <laughs> Jack was a good guy. He had a lot of good points about him, but he, you know, everybody has a couple of... But that was one of his. He would leave the tails of the fish. He would fill up the box and the tails would be sticking out. <laughs> Any uh, interesting Jack Freck story that comes to mind? Oh, Jack was willing to swim and... and go anywhere with the suit he went uh, there's a reef out, I don't know how far it is I did I didn't go with him but they went some reef up in Connecticut that's like a mile and a half off the beach yeah that you walk out at an angle and if some into some ship close to a shipping lane and the uh, Penfield Reef I think it's called Jack was uh, Jack went to the furthest rocks Jack went yeah Boy, Jack would fish fish till so he would fish two tides. That's where I got the saying, fish two tides. He would literally fish two tides. Sun up, sun down. <laughs> fish. For a guy that, that was so aggressive and, and, and fearless, Yeah. Uh, he died in, in, in the strangest of ways. He died, uh, he used to keep lobster pots near his, the home he built in uh, South, uh, South Hold. He would wrap the rope around his arm and gun the engine and pull this is what I, I was told I wasn't there and they assumed that he one of the traps got stuck pulled him overboard and the boat hit him in the head now he was a, uh, he made plugs he was yeah. a plug builder uh, but he never sold them obviously he was no he, he never sold yeah no. he never sold plugs. not to my knowledge he right. never sold plugs what was his go-to plugs uh, if you read his memoirs, I, I don't want to brag, but <laughs> the one, if he only could have one plug in his bag, it would be the WY, which is a papa. He used to swim it at night. That was, And second behind that would be the Adam 40, which he didn't really make. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. he made a lot of different... He made a lot of different sliders, divers, darters, large darters, uh, plastic... Poppers, the WY, the banana. The banana was a phenomenal plug. And he always made, and he knew when the, there was a lot of bunker around. Well, he fished. He constantly fished. And and he he devised a banana plug and it worked. It works to this day. I always carry them. Is there a story behind the banana plug? The banana plug is, he was out in Prospect Point. Uh, and he wasn't doing much, and they were killing the they were killing the fish with live bunker around the big fish, and that they that eats Jack up. Jack can't take that, <laughs> so he devised he built a plug that swam like a bunker. And uh, why did they name it banana? Because it looks like a banana. <laughs> he called he he named it. He calls it the he called it the banana, banana plug. Also the Nantucket sled, but he seen that from a guy up in Nantucket. He's seen that plug, but he, he made, we made, used to make him out of oak. When did he stop fishing, Amato? Uh, my guess, and I'm not exactly, I would say 77, his knees started to go, and, and Jack couldn't never accept being second best. He had to be Uno, <laughs> and he was he couldn't keep up like that, so my started fishing going there talking a lot he, you didn't see him and you didn't see him no more at Montauk 